Welcome to Your Basic, where we avoid our adult responsibilities and read YA fantasy. I'm one of your hosts, Deadly, and uh, even though we had a pandemic last year, I still didn't read enough books. And I'm your other host, Danny, and I am a book buying shopaholic. Okay. <laughs> So long, 2020. On this episode, we're looking at what 2021 holds and discussing our reading resolutions. Yeah, new new year, new books is the is the kind of new year, new books is (laughs) my life mantra now. Yeah, there won't be a new me, but there'll be new stuff on my wardrobe, wardrobe bookshelf for sure. (laughs) Bookshelf and wardrobe. (laughs) They're everywhere in home. I don't have a bedside table. I just have a stack of books at this point. That is so Pinterest. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, that's so aesthetically... Tumblr. That's so Tumblr. <laughs> so millennial of you. Okay, so first topic is kind of things we want to adapt or drop this year with our reading habits, because uh, if there's anything a pandemic's taught us is, well, for me, I can have as much time as possible, but still uh, procrastinate and not kind of read the things I want to read. Um, I'm literally the same. So my, yeah, I'm I'm actually going into the year trying to allocate myself some time to read because I think if I don't do that, I'm really bad at just getting distracted and watching Netflix instead. Yeah, that's really easy to do, to be honest. To be honest, I go through phases. I can, like, read two books a week um, and, like, not look at Netflix once and then I can also like not pick up a book for two months and literally just constantly binge watch Netflix it's really hard to keep up really like healthy reading habits um completely and it it really it depends if a book really grabs me I think probably the same I'm the same yeah the amount of books last year that I this never happens to me as well but the amount of books last year I picked up and then didn't even finish because I couldn't get past the first 100 pages that isn't necessarily because they were bad, but just because they were, like, not pulling me in. Not, like, like throwing me into a universe where I was really excited to be in it. Um, yeah, completely. I, I'm the same, actually. I started so many books uh, and haven't finished them. I've got, like, five of my currently reading on Goodreads. Same. Which I never have. I actually cleared <laughs> um, it at the start of this year. I was like, you know what? New year, new start. Let's get rid of all them. And if I, st- I do try to read them again, we'll start from the beginning. Um, that's probably the best way yeah. to be because I don't know where I am in half those books no around. they all just blur into one book all of these books are completely different <laughs> and now just one book because we just didn't finish them yeah completely um, and that actually kind of segues into our Goodreads uh, goals uh, past and present we kind of uh, if you guys aren't on the Goodreads app not sponsored but could hopefully. be hopefully um, <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like a book social media. Uh, Daddy introduced me to it, and it's really kind of addicting because you can set like a yearly goal of how many books you want to read, and then as you read them, it kind of updates your your little bar of how well you're doing. Yeah, it's a really really helpful tool to like um, keep track of what books you've read, what books you want to read. So sometimes I struggle. I think, oh, I've just finished a book, and I think, oh, what do I want to read next? And it's really helpful for me to just grab the Goodreads app off my phone and like scroll through all of the books I want to read and like go through all of them and see which one's really shouting at me is that what I want to read next or to find something similar to what I've just read you know when you get into the theme of things and you think I just really want to read (laughs) another book where there's like fae or I want to be in that world again I'm having withdrawal symptoms Mm -hmm. um so it's really good tool for that and you can also scan all of the books it's so like addictive to get the scanning app bit up and scan every single oh one God. of the books yeah. on your shelf you feel like a librarian you feel like you walk at work at waterstones <laughs> or something and you're like scanning books <laughs> in a shop yeah and it's kind of satisfying when you kind of have read stuff to co- go back and look at everything you have read and be like actually yeah i've read all these books yeah um and kind of live back in that but i woefully failed my reading challenge last year so the year before last I challenged myself to read 50 books and I read like 56 uh this past year I challenged myself to read 30 because I knew I was going into like full-time work uh and I read 17 but you know what deadly that's an accomplishment in itself like reading 17 books and starting a new job 
I think you're too hard on yourself. Yeah, it is. Uh, I know, but I, I just love to complete a challenge. Yes. You don't back down from a challenge. Um, See, I, I I tried my very best to hit my target. To be honest, at the start of the year, I said I'll read 50. Because last year, the year before, I read 46. But I was the same as you. I was working full time. I was doing an apprenticeship at that point, And I had no time. I didn't even have weekends. Um, but I did travel a lot. So I could read a lot on public transport, which helped. And then yeah. I was like, 46, I could definitely do 50 year this year. I'm going into a job where it's not as tolling on me. It's just, it's a lot easier. Yeah. I'll have a lot more time. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, wow, <laughs> let's, let's not read. Let's just, let's just do everything else but read. So I read about 30, 37 books. I wasn't too far off 40. That's pretty good, though. That's really yeah. good. Um, yeah, I changed it to 40 because I knew I wasn't going to get to 50. It, and then I, I was like, I wish I'd have changed it to 30. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> so I had to take a hit as well. I know. I changed mine to 25 and I still didn't make it. Um, but I think definitely... I've, I've already... I've discovered this year that I actually... Because I now we have our daily exercise... Um, and I used to just listen to music. Now I listen to an audiobook, which has really helped my kind of book consumption um so even in this last week i've i've finished a book and i've just started another one this morning um so it's kind of a, a good way for me to start the new year i think is to add uh, audio audiobooks to my regime as my reading because then i'm still kind of digesting books yeah i think that audiobooks are a really big uh, help to a lot of people personally i'm not an audiobook person I try my best, mm -hmm. I try my best to, to listen to them, but I just can't. And I think it's really about the, the right audiobook to pick, I think, mm, because the one that yes. I've, the only one that I've actually downloaded on my Audible, and the only one that I'm like listening to at the minute is Heartless by Marissa Meyer, which I'm okay. sure, that, do you know what? The book itself, I'm really enjoying, and I'm, I wanna know what happens, and I wanna know this, but, it's it's obviously so heartless is about um the queen of hearts which is alice in wonderland and alice yeah. in wonderland is british she's it's set in england i assume it's set yeah. in england anyway yeah um, it is it is <laughs> yeah and the narrator is um american far enough uh... but there's <laughs> there's just some certain words she doesn't say right that aren't pronounced that way in england and they have all the meetings and they just it makes it very hard for me to listen to but i've heard there's a lot of fantastic audio books out there that are really well done yes like i definitely um yeah i i think audible, audible has a thing where you can sample a book for like five minutes i think so that's definitely worth it to get the the voice down i'm like so well i'll talk about it later in the podcast but i i just finished listening to six of crows which, by the way, is fantastic, but we'll get to that. Um, and that's really interesting because it's told from so many different people's perspectives. They've got a different narrator for each character, so each chapter is a different voice. Um, and it really kind of refreshed my audio audiobook experience because I was like, oh, who's next? Is it going to be Kaz? Is it going to be Nina? And it was, like, really cool. That's really cool. I think another book that our friend Beth, um, she said that she uh, read through Audible and an audio audio book. Um, she said that Aurora Rising, which is one of my favourite books ever, my favourite wife like books to have ever been written. She said that that audio book <laughs> is amazing, and I think that's very similar to Six of Crows. Oh, okay. But it has different people. I say I think I've read the book a few times. I know <laughs> that it's from different people, the different characters' point of views. And so that, I think it's that similar. Okay. They um, have different That's voices good. for every person. And I think it might have sound effects and stuff on it as well. I'm, I might be wrong. Oh my God. I might have to I watch me download that after this series because I love a good one. That's my new, my new thing this year is like audiobook appreciation, I think. Yes. I mean, there's certain books I can imagine. So another book that I've read, Illumina, The Illuminae Files, which is by the same authors who wrote Aurora rising that in itself is an insane reading experience you have to read it well i don't know yeah. it could be an interesting one to 
like read through audiobook because um a lot of the bits are like redacted and i don't oh, know how okay. that would come across on the audiobook yeah but it's, it's really interesting to read and look at on a page so i can't really imagine yeah what it there's certain like. ones that i feel like wouldn't translate because i i know with i read um all the stalking jack the ripper series through audiobook and they with the audiobook included like a pdf of all the images that were in the book oh right yeah um but obviously with kind of like illuminate it's i haven't read it but i've i've seen the book and it's kind of all woven inside it so i'm like i don't know how that would work it's kind of similar to um miss peregrine's they're like the whole premise of those books is that they made a story up out of like found uh vintage photographs oh, okay yeah so I have that book. in in between the parts yeah it's i was sort of like how would they i guess they would just do the same kind of pdf where you just have to go and look up the image um well that's what i loved about reading um miss peregrine's in physical copy is that you kind of when you get to a part the next page is a scan of like the old photograph um so i think there's some some places where a physical book is preferable but it's definitely easy for if you're on the go uh an audiobook is the way yeah and i think if, you, if think. you're worried about not getting your goodreads um goal or if you are thinking i need to get this for myself obviously it's for you it's a hobby reading is a hobby we don't want you to feel like you have to yeah. set yourself goals <laughs> um it can be quite stressful so don't if, if you're a person that gets quite stressed and under pressure about things don't don't set yourself those goals you know just do you yeah no. you don't have to set goals on goodreads you can just have it for the scanning abilities yeah and you can just chill the traceability. But... but if you do feel like you want to set a goal and you are struggling to um yeah. meet that goal then just pick up an audio book listen to it on your yeah. on your daily exactly. i think me and daddy we we love a challenge yeah. we're both quite competitive. Very competitive so we when we set ourselves a goal we're like right i have to do this um whereas if you don't respond to that maybe don't yeah <laughs> um yeah if you if you like it do it but if you don't don't pressure yourself 2021 but it's about being <laughs> it's our about best just selves. chilling <laughs> yeah and not putting any, ourselves under that much pressure because we don't need it this year we're leaving that behind we really in don't. 2020. Yeah. We're a weekend and it's already been too much. I mean, so, we already spoke about yeah. Netflix a bit, but has anybody else watched Bridgerton? Because me and Deadly oh, binge watched Bridgerton and <sighs> we are obsessed and we <laughs> are going to definitely read the books, I think. Yeah, I, I'm like so excited because I, I found the series so compelling. And obviously the way that they've done it visually is just spectacular. Like, if the book is anything similar to that, this kind of, like, opulent, inclusive, incredible kind of world, then I'm like, we have to read I'm it. I'm literally like, absolutely. obsessed. It's so good. If you haven't watched it, it's called Bridgerton. It's on Netflix. It is, um, when is it set? It's a regency. Um, it's it's a regency like drama. Regency, yeah. It's the regency period. You can kind of tell from the clothing, but it's almost that kind of fantasy take, but not fantasy. Just the they use modern fabrics and hairstyling techniques and kind of and classical covers of modern songs. Yes. Uh, oh, it's it, so It kind good. of feels like how how they you know the modern Great Gatsby. Yes. Oh, it's I love kind that of film. that vibe. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because they. Uh, uh, I think it was either Gucci or Prada did the costumes for that. Oh, yeah, um, you can tell. So it's that kind of, like, looking at the past through our modern technology and elevating it so much more. Yeah, so I don't know if you've seen the film Emma. Oh, yes, yeah. But I feel like it's very similar in that, that they, they did the same thing where they looked at the costumes yes. and they, they took the Regency aspect of it and they just added... Are like modern because do you it, yeah, you want to make it attractive to people nowadays when they were written hundreds Completely. of years ago? So obviously, yeah. or set hundreds of years ago. Obviously, Bridgerton wasn't written a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it is. A, it's like um, it's a Regency version of Gossip Girl. So it's yes. it centers around like lots of different characters, and they are. I don't know what it's called. What is it called? 
So when someone's like a debutante, who oh, when they it, have yeah. like a coming out, um, so it said it's one of the main characters. She is like the the main debutante of the season, the queen's favorite, uh, and it kind of follows that. Uh, follows it kind of, yeah, it's like Gossip Girl because it's it's got like a salacious gossip column which somehow gets everyone's in- information yeah. and um yeah and it's got a really diverse cast um and yeah it's just beautiful i just and it's so addictive like i watched it all in one sitting uh, yeah it, t- it took me a couple of days so i watched it with my family um don't Oops, recommend doing yeah, that. Don't do that maybe just watch it on your own but um yeah yeah it's it a bit steamy it took me about th- two three days to like finish yeah. it it was so good i might watch it again yeah. Literally, we we were messaging each other. It was over Christmas, messaging each other like, "Oh my god, this! Oh my god, this!" I keep I'm sending like... deadly like TikToks, <laughs> of, like Bridgerton TikToks, because I'm like well and truly on Bridgerton TikTok now. Well, we love that, but yeah, we definitely have to read it, read them, and then we can kind of talk about the adaptation and see where it, how it is. Yeah, we can we, we, we can do a comparison. I know it's not necessarily YA fantasy, but it feels very relevant to now maybe we could do half an yeah, episode and, yeah and then like half the yeah, episode and get back to it it's kind of i don't know if it is ya but they are young adults and they are yeah they are young <laughs> they are they do have hijinks yeah um so but yeah th- that is definitely on our our recommend list if you haven't already lockdown um, activities watch bridgerton stream v- bridgerton <laughs> <laughs> hashtag stream bridgerton bridgerton fan cam um <laughs> Another thing that we were kind of thinking about is that we have so many books on our bookshelves that we haven't read. Oh my goodness. So me and Deadly both subscribe to Fairy Loot. So every oh month God. we receive a YA fantasy book and we were discussing the other day. So that's 12 books a year that we get from the subscription service as well as yep. other things in the box. If you haven't heard of Fairy Loot before, it's a YA fantasy subscription box where you get... Um, one book that's signed it's a hardback book that's a spined ex- spined signed <laughs> exclusive edition of that book and you also get um other ya fantasy themed pieces goodies. in them yeah, yeah goodies um so it's perfect it's a perfect gift for any ya fans or if you just like it really is. things and just yeah definitely keep an eye on the subscription list that was not sponsored by the way we both just pay for, pay for <laughs> we, that we both yeah we both just love it yeah um, um but we were discussing the other day how many books that we've actually read so i have been subscribed to fairly <laughs> a bit longer than deadly like four months longer than deadly yeah. and i've read two <laughs> two so that's like over a year i've been subscribed to fairy loot so that's over 12 books and i have read two of those 12 books yeah, and I think I've read half of one. Yeah, and Debbie's read half Shadows of one. Shadows Between Us? Yeah. yeah. Which, Which was is, an amazing I feel like book, I should by have the just, way. I should have just sped through it. Shadows Between Us, um, it's it's really compelling and really good. I just, you know when you just put a book down and then never pick it back up? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I need to, my resolu- I need to finish those five books on my reading Goodreads. <laughs> That's my New Year's resolution, just get them done. I know. But yeah, we, we I think a New Year's resolution for the two of us, a New Year's book revolution, revolution, resolution, I cannot speak today, I am sorry, is that we read as many books on our bookshelf as possible. We're putting oh ourselves on a book buying ban, which actually is not going to be kept to. I can already say that now, because I've already broken yeah. it. I've already bought two I know, books this you're, year. You're such a book buying enabler as well. Sorry, like, I am an enabler. It's really bad. I have... I pre-ordered the new um, Lee Bardugo because you put it on your Instagram story. Well, it was a signed and special edition, wasn't it? It was a signed and special edition. I couldn't, let everybody, edition. I couldn't let everybody miss out. Um, unfortunately, that has sold out now, my loves. But otherwise, I would have told you that you can go and get the signed edition of the Lee Bardugo book that's coming out this year, but yes. it has sold out. But in the future, if I do come across it, I will definitely let everyone know. If you follow us on Instagram, I will put it on the story. Any exclusives yeah. that I found, any like signed editions of books that I think that everyone would want, I'm happy to share. 
and if you see any that you think I haven't seen, please let me know because I will definitely buy them and I don't mind spending money on it. <laughs> Just send us Completely. a DM. I th- yeah, we, we love to see it. And we, I think, especially in the YA fandom, everyone loves a special edition. Yeah. Um, so we, because there's a, I pre-ordered at the same time, there's the new Miss Peregrine's book, uh, the sided special one as well, that's still up, I you, think. You do so, keep buying run, these Miss Peregrine's books and you don't read them, and it makes me laugh. I know, <laughs> it makes me laugh so much. I've literally got, I think I've got three to read, and I, I last summer I sped through them because I love those books, but it's now, it's in like, the main story kind of feels like it's done and it's now in like the after story which is just taking a while to ramp up so yeah. i just haven't but yeah i i just think the books are really pretty so i just they are pretty them. i think i've got the first one that i just haven't read i think it's because i watched mm. the film a mistake i know i shouldn't have done it i oh. watched the film and then i thought i can't be bothered and then i should have <laughs> just read them but i just didn't do it the film was such a betrayal because it's tim burton and miss peregrine so i'm like it should have been fantastic yeah but like the two the two main characters they swapped so mm. emma and olive like the main the main girl who is like the main love interest is supposed to be the one with fire powers Oh, okay. But they they didn't think that was love interesty enough, so they swapped the floaty girl in. Oh, to be honest, like... I didn't really understand it. I can't say I've watched it multiple times, <sighs> so I really wouldn't know. But it's like quick premise. Not going to take up much time, but it's basically like Victorian X Men. Uh, so it's kids with powers who have to defeat an evil. They're in a school. Um, and there's like time traveling and lots of weird things, but it's all told through like found pictures. And uh, it's during World War Two. No, it's so not not Victorian. It starts in Victoria <laughs> and then jumps around. But a lot of the story is in World War Two, which they kind of just glossed over in the film. X Men, um, but make it Victorian, but not Victorian World War Two. But II. not Victorian. <laughs> make it 1940s. Yeah. Um, there's one part where they go to Comic Con and it kills me. Oh my! It's what? so funny. How is it World yes. War Two when they go to Comic Con? So oh, it's they time they time jump. Oh okay. So they time jump to like <laughs> 2010 and then they have to go through Comic Con, but then everyone just thinks they're cosplayers, and it's Stop. really funny. That's so funny. That was really confused. That was really funny for me to like hear because I have, as a person who's never read it, me hearing you say it's Victorian but World War Two, then they go to Comic Con. I was like, what in the what pad is going on in these books? Literally, it really is. Yeah. So they, yeah. Anyone who's read it will understand my kind of time confusion because a lot of it happens in the Victorian era, a lot of it happens in the modern day, and a lot of it happens in World War Two. And it's in like Florida, in Wales, in Scotland, in London. It is. It is like it's like a crazy fan fiction. I'm gonna. Um, I might read that now. You, you definitely sold me on it. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, and you'd like it because with the main girl Emma actually having firepower, she's so sassy, and it is that kind of like enemies to lovers sort of trope, which they just did <gasps> not do in the film. Enemies to lovers is my favorite trope. We all know. We love. We love. Um, okay. Yeah. Do we wanna do we wanna move on to our big, big chunky topic? Yes, the main topic for today's episode is our most anticipated reads of twenty twenty one. Now whoop, this, whoop. I feel like this is gonna be a reoccurring theme in the podcast that we're gonna talk about new releases, and every year we should definitely do a podcast like this where we talk about yeah. all the things that are coming out that are not necessarily the popular books that everyone's talking about but ones that we've discovered that we are excited to come out maybe the debuts of some of the authors maybe yeah we've, we've done some digging we to have find done some, some digging some hidden gems and we've tried to make them as like diverse as possible like, and i say diverse i mean diverse as in they're not all the same type of ya fantasy they're a nice mix of different themes and different yeah stories um but, but also diverse <laughs> as in, <laughs> but also diverse as in, a lot of them are written by authors of color, or they have queer characters, um, which POC we're really passionate characters. about pushing POC characters, POC main characters, which is very important. Yes. Um, and yeah, there's some really good ones on the list. Yes. Yeah, so, Diddley, you can read the first. 
entry. Okay, so um, we've seen this one popping up all over Instagram. A lot of people are really hyped for it. It's called Law uh, by Alexandra Brackham. It's coming out, oh, it came out on the 5th of January. Oh. So this past week, uh, but it's still a new release because it's only been like two days. Yeah. Um, so the basic premise is like the Hunger Games but make it Greek mythology. Uh, so Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals and hunted by families who were wronged and given the opportunity to kill them. Uh, it's about Law Perseus who flew, who fled Olympus and is approached by Athena who needs her help and an old childhood friend Castor who she thought was dead. Um, so it's it's basically, as we say, that kind of like classic YA, high stakes, uh, lots of tension and drama. Um, and we both love the Hunger Games anyway. And Percy Jackson. Uh, so, and Percy Jackson. Like, Greek mythology is our jam. Um, I'm currently looking at my fairy loop calendar with Percy Jackson on the back of my door right now. Cute. Um, but yeah, and it just sounds like it's going to be such our cup of tea. And yes. from people on Instagram, it seems like it's pretty well received so far. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading it. Um, I've not got it yet. Because I feel like we may yeah. be getting it soon. No spoilers for anything. I'm not going to say where I think I'm going to get it. But no, I'm not going to get we're, it. But we're holding out. Yeah. But we, um, yeah, we're really excited. We both have Greek mythology, so I'm sure it's going to be a really cool, fresh take on it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So the next book on our list is wench by maxine kaplan and that is released on the january the 18th um yeah this is one i'm really excited to tell you about it's, it's just, gonna be oh i'm really excited to talk about it so it's, so cool. it's a funny fiercely feminist ya epic fantasy following the adventures of a tavern wench Tanya has worked at her tavern since she was able to see over the bar. She broke up her first fight at 11. By the time she was a teenager, she knew everything about the place and she could run it with her eyes closed. She'd never let anyone, whether it be a drunkard or a captain of a Queen's Guard, take advantage of her. But when her guardian dies, she might lose it all. The bar, her home, her purpose in life. So she heads out on a quest to petition to the Queen to keep the tavern in her name dodging unscrupulous guards a band of thieves and a powerful enchanted feather that seems to that seems drawn to her fast-paced magical and unapologetically feminist wench is an incredible fantasy like you've never seen it before i mean that just sounds crazy good like nothing like i've ever read before no it's like such a flip on everything because it's yeah I'm it's about the bar wench literally <laughs> who who knew that bar wenches gave well bar bar maids gave off like main character energy because i never would have thought about it but if you think about it it makes so much sense that she it's is the main so character. perfect perfect like, she's like no oh, i'm all so of the, excited for it she's gonna be so badass like i already know like as a person who worked behind a bar for my te- in my teenage years, I know exactly how thick-skinned that job makes you and how badass it makes yeah. you. So I'm so excited <laughs> to read about her and her adventures. I can't wait. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be like a self-insert for you. Yeah, you're gonna be like, I know this. Fan fiction. About okay, my life. next. Oh my god, <laughs> lol. Uh, next book is Cast in Firelight by Dana Swift. It's just coming out 19th of January. Uh, so this is the first book in an epic, heart-pounding fantasy duology about two royal heirs betrothed to be married, but whose loyalties are torn, and a ruthless enemy who threatens their world. Ardra, the royal heir of Belwa, a talented witch on the cusp of taking her royal ceremony test, and a girl who just wants to prove her worth to people and Jatin, are the royal heir. A competitive wizard who's mastered all of nine colours of magic, and a boy anxious to return home. The first time since he was a child, they're betrayed to be married and unite their kingdoms. Only Destiny has other plans, and a criminal underbelly of Belawar is suddenly making a move for control. Their paths cross, and neither realises who the other is, adopting secret secret identities. It's uh, basically like an enemies to lovers of people in disguise who are already betrothed. Yeah. But... Do you know what? Oh, I think it gives it's... me off like a do you know, Aladdin vibe. So, like when Jasmine was, she was pretending to be a yes, like a peasant. peasant. I don't want to say peasant because it's <laughs> but and then like when Aladdin pretends to be a prince, but also that they are both royalty, but they're also both. I think they're like vigilantes. 
Yeah. And they're going... It, it sounds like it's like going into the underworld as, like, undercover... Yeah. I'm literally so excited for that. That one is just right up my street. Like, classic enemies to lovers. But also betrayed to be married. I love that. That is just... It's like, we know they're going to end up together, but it's going to be the ride along the way. I know. That is the... I hope it's a slow burn. <laughs> Oh, I, I bet you it will be from that description. Like when we were looking it up, we were both on uh, Skype. Like, <gasps> oh my gosh, this sounds so dramatic. So good. I'm literally so excited to read that one. That's going to be fantastic. Um, the next one is called City of Villains by Estelle Laurie, and that comes out on January the 26th. Now this one is right up deadly street like yeah honestly oh when i read it i was i read i found this one and i said to Debbie, I was, oh my god this was made for you this book <laughs> so disney's villains meets gotham in this gritty fairy tale inspired crime series mary elizabeth hart is a high school senior by day but by night she's an intern at the monarch city police department she watches with envy from behind us from behind as detectives come and go trying to contain the city's growing crime rate for years, tension has simmered between the city's wealthy elite and their plan to gentrify the decaying neighbour called the Scar. Once upon a time, the epicentre of all things magic. When the daughter of one of the city's most powerful businessmen goes missing, Mary Elizabeth is thrilled when the chief actually puts her on the case. But what begins as a missing persons report soon multiplies, leading her down a rabbit hole of a city in turmoil. There she finds a girl with thorn- with horns, a boyfriend with secrets, and what seems to be a sea monster lurking in a poison lake. As the mystery circles closer to home, Mary finds herself caught in the fight between those who once had magic and those who would do anything to bring it back. This dark, edgy YA series explores the reimagined origins of Maleficent, Ursula, Captain Hook, and other infamous Disney villains that you've never seen them before. I mean... That is just I mean, made for you, deadly. Literally, that's like they might as well have added me exactly. and be like, "Get on this!" It, oh, that's so exciting. And like, Gotham is one of my favorite TV shows. I honestly love Disney villains, so I add YA. It's like my three three favorite things. Um, if for those of you who don't know, Deadly is a massive Disney villains fan. Oh yeah. When we absolutely. first met, it... Deadly was dressed as Maleficent, so that really goes to show you <laughs> how much. She's obsessed with them. But Literally. Yeah, so exciting. It kind of gives me like I don't know, once upon a time vibes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say, and like I back in the day loved Once Upon a Time. Not gonna lie. And I love like any kind of detective story. I really love a mystery to solve, so I feel like mystery, YA, villains, a grimy city, it's gonna be so cool. I'm really excited. Yeah. And I'm probably going to want to cosplay from it because we know my weakness. <laughs> yeah. How exciting. I know. Okay, our next book is called The Gilded Ones by Mani- Naomina Fauna. Really butchered that. Um, the, which is coming out the 4th of February. Uh, so, in this world, girls are outcasts by blood and warriors by choice. Get ready for battle. 16-year-old Zeka lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she will become a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural in- intuition, Zeka prays for red blood so that she can finally feel like she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the colour of impurity, and Zeka knows she will face a consequence worth- worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to the village with her return's choice. Stay in the village and submit her fate, or leave to fight for the Emperor in an army of girls just like her. They are called Alaki Near Immortals with rare gifts, and they are the only ones who can stop the Empire's greatest threat. The start of a bold and immersive fantasy series for fans of Children of Blood and Bone and Black Panther. Like That's really exciting. I know we have we both have this book as an arc, don't we? Yeah, we both got it as an advanced reader copy and haven't read it yeah Um, but (laughs) i'll try and read it before it comes out (laughs) yeah me too because we've got until february yeah it sounds really cool and again like really diverse and fantastic and i love anything to do i have a weird like obsession with that kind of blood magic in books i think it's such an interesting concept 
I think yeah, it's really like it's like a, like a different concept. Um, I know I have I have children of Blood and Bone, but I haven't read it, and I absolutely adore Black Panther, so I'm sure I'll love this. Like, yeah, I'm just really yeah. excited. The cover is beautiful. The one that we've got. Oh my god, the cover is stunning. It's like, and it's definitely it centers just... around a POC. Um, yeah. Protagonist, so we stand. We love that. Um, we need we to see more of it. I can't wait. It's going to be really exciting. Um, the next one on our list is The Iron Raven by Julie Kagawa. And that comes out on February the 9th. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Um, <laughs> We've been butchering all these names. I know. Please I really have to apologise for the, our terrible pronunciation. But we are trying <laughs> our best. Um, yeah. This one is A Midsummer Night's Dream, but make it why fancy. Um, Robin Goodfellow, Puck, Prankster, Joker, Raven, Fool. King Oberon's right hand jester from A Midsummer Night's Dream. The legends are, are many, but the truth will now be known. As Puck finally tells his own story and faces a threat from a time before fairy began. A threat that brings him face to face with a new enemy, himself. With the Iron Queen, Megan Chase, and her prince consort, Puck's longtime rival, Ash, and allies old and new by his side, Puck begins a fantastical and dangerous adventure not to be missed or forgotten. Evanfall is coming, and with, with it reckoning that even their combined powers and wits may not vanquish as a shadow falls over the lands of fairy and the world slips into chaos. I mean, oh my God. how exciting. I'm a massive fan of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I actually went to see it, not last summer, the summer before, um, in mm. on the West End. Yes, on the West End, and it was freaking amazing. So I'm really excited to see a new take on it. Anything Shakespeare-inspired, Yeah, I love. It's so, it's so cool to see like new life breathed into Shakespeare, and also, you know, we love some fairies. Exactly. So. We are here for it, absolutely. So next on our list is, highly anticipated, uh, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas on the 16th of February. So this one is uh, not in our list of unknowns because it is by the uh, behemoth that is Sarah J Maas that cannot be stopped. Um, So we'll just really briefly uh, sum up what it is because obviously we can't really go into it without many spoilers. Uh, but it's the fourth book in the Akatar series, so uh, A Court of Thorn and Roses. Uh, it focuses on Nesta, whose favourite sister, and Cassian, who uh, is one of Reese's best friends, and badass fey warrior Himbo is what we have written. Um, it focuses on how Nesta is dealing with her trauma and relationships with other characters, uh, and how she tries to find her place uh, within the kind of Night Court. And we both love Nesta as a character. Yeah, she's really I think complex. She's the most, oh, she's so fantastic, and like we see so much Nesta hate on the internet, and we're we're here to yeah. If if you fight if Nesta's you're one of those corner. people that, who aren't a fan of Nesta, I really hope that this book opens your eyes to the potential that she has and like how complex she is because I really do think like I think we've spoken about this before that we think that Akatar is marketed to the wrong age group really. Yeah. Um, because she's just she's like an adult character who is obviously struggling with very adult emotions and she's gone yeah. through a lot of stuff that she wasn't she didn't want to so i think it's going to be really really refreshing to read about her her experiences yeah, her, and what she's been through and her how kind she's of struggles with it. Yeah, yeah completely yeah. i think it it'll, it's i'm really looking forward to it more than kind of any other actor book really because i think it's got such a great opportunity to go to those places yes uh and yeah it'll be really interesting i'm very excited for it cassian as well is my favorite character <sighs> i love him with my whole heart he was just <laughs> he's just i look have you don't have a weakness for a himbo and i, I don't know you could argue that yeah. he isn't a himbo because he's got his own talents in his own ways and he's a, he's a, a war general that very good at but war I think strategy that... and stuff but he's just a soft boy and I love him more than yeah anything. he's just soft and he doesn't really have he is a himbo I think because he means the best but he just doesn't know how to 
how to get there. He uses like uh, his humour, the cope. I don't know, like he's just perfect. I love uh, him so much. He's just my favourite. <laughs> I want one. I want a Cassigan in my life. So I'm excited to read about him as well from his point of view. I'm really, I'm just really excited for this book. I just can't wait. Yeah. Okay, so the next book on our list is Of Silver and Shadow by Jennifer Gruenke. And that's coming out on the 16th of February. I apologise again if I said the name wrong. I have no idea how it's pronounced. (laughs) So this book focuses on a petty thief called Ren, a silver wielder from the kingdom of Erdis where magic has been outlawed for a century. She's approached by a wealthy rebel leader who offers her a small fortune to help overthrow the crown. Meanwhile, in the castle, the king's children are competing to see who can find the rebel leader first. The winner will become the first right-hand man of the king, but the youngest prince of Erdis finds himself pulled into the rebellion. Time is running out and Ren must stop uh, must stop the threat. I have no idea what I've written. <laughs> must um must take stop the, the throne. Being taken? I know, no, oh, must the take throne. the throne before war breaks out. Um it just seems like the like a classic YA. There's a there's a bad person on the thrown they need to be overthrown yeah. but make it interesting by giving us the perspective from the enemy as well and seeing what yeah. that actually because i always like that when it's a bit complex and you don't actually know who the bad person is and you don't know what side you're meant to be on and i just think that makes it a bit more exciting and i feel like that's what yeah. we're gonna get with this i feel like that kind of morally gray uh area is really interesting to explore because yeah. i feel like oh you're good you're bad it's kind of been done before whereas this is like it, it is that kind of like sympathizing with the enemy and realizing that in their own story they're probably the good guy yeah but that's like the truth of everything so i'm really excited to see where that goes it just seems like yeah, like a classic YA fantasy adventure where we've got like kingdoms and a government and things and like a complex yeah. world that we're gonna get like wrapped into again i'm really excited to read that one yeah, the law sounds like it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, ooh, next one. Oh, I am so excited for this next one. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so it's called A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth, and it's coming out the 23rd of February. A half fate outcast desperate for acceptance, a tempestuous fury exiled and hell-bent on revenge, the dutiful prince determined to earn his place, the brooding guardian burdened by a terrible secret. Each holds the key to solving a series of ritualistic murders that threaten to expose fairies to the human world, but they cannot do it alone. To track down the killer, they will have to form a tenuous alliance, putting their differences aside and their conflicts. Failure to risk failure risks the deception of the fairy and human worlds alike, and time is running out. Time to roll the dice. Oh my god. Ooh. Fae murder mystery. Absolutely. Literally. And uh, I have it on good authority that most of the characters are queer um so <laughs> i just need some lgbt hero like, in my life again you know it, i just need it i'm so excited yeah. for that that sounds so so cool Med- it's like i love a group coming together of like unlikely heroes see this is six of crows for you this is the six of crows in yeah me. it is it is completely like i just need and, more. like and of course, they have to get a broody guardian in there. Broody for our, boy. Our broody boys. Broody boy. I feel like... Yes, broody boy. I can't wait. wait. Oh, I'm, so I'm so excited. It's going to be so good. I'm really excited. And the cover is beautiful. Like, it's one of those classic YA covers where you're like, yes. Can't wait. We are both very excited for that one. Um, so the next on our list is the long-anticipated sequel to... Woo. The Last Hours Trilogy, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, which comes out on the 1st of March. Um, it's the second book in the Last Hours Trilogy, but it's but the Last Hours Trilogy is a follow-on from The Infernal Devices, so we definitely recommend that you read the infi- at least The Infernal Devices before you pick yeah. up any of these books. If not, all of the books that Cassie's ever all written. Of them, literally but we are very much so advocates of Cassandra Clare's writing, so take that as you will but definitely if you want to read this series read the infernal devices because 
Yes, you wouldn't. Yeah. You would not understand it otherwise. <laughs> so um, it follows the Edwardian generation of shadow hunters, um, and it's set in London, and it carries on from the first book in the series, Chain of Gold. I won't go into it too much, but we are very no, excited for this the, book to come yeah. out. Yeah, we, uh, as we've said before, kind of Cassie's writing has just got better and better as she's gone on, um, and we've kind of grown with her, mm. um, and yeah. Chain of Gold. I'm well. Chain of Iron was a journey. No, Chain of Gold. Yeah, no, Chain oh, of Gold man. was a journey. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Too many metals. Um, but yeah, no. And we really love the characters. And every time I start a new one, I'm like, how am I going to love these characters as much as I love the last ones? And then they get us. And that also follows a POC um, protagonist. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, it's it's just not so great. Good. LGBT rap. It's yes, like, it does. yeah. Yeah, it follows up some LGBT um, romance. Oh my god. I'm we've so got quite excited. a few. It's got quite a few LGBT stories in yes, it, actually. It does, thinking it does. about it. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, um, if that's something that you're yeah. interested in, definitely read definitely. it. But definitely read The Infernal Devices before. If you're going to read any yeah. of her books, then The Infernal Devices is the, Infernal Devices. Is the series to read. If you don't fancy. It's our mutual favourite. Yeah. If you don't fancy reading The Moral Instruments, yeah, maybe you, you could probably get away with not reading it. You can you can pick up. Yeah, I I think you could actually because she explains the law in the beginning anyway um, of infernal devices. So, but yeah, definitely read the infernal fun. devices. It's amazing. It's the best. <laughs> Our next book is A Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley, which comes out on the 9th of March. Uh, so. This one is, Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling coven and cursed with the inability to love. The only way she can get those feelings back, even for just a little while, is to steal love from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic, despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to trade with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Rem, the only t- caretaker to her ailing father, has spent her life hiding her secret. When a magical plague ravages the kingdom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes a bargain. If Tamsin will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing, and these two have a long, perilous journey ahead of them. That is, if they don't kill each other first. Wow. Ooh. I mean, that sounds like the most enemies to lovers <laughs> story that you could get. Absolutely. Give me that any day of the week. Literally. And it's got my blood magic. It's yes. got my witches. <gasps> wow. It's literally... Did they write this for us, Deadly? Oh my god. <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure one of the main characters is POC too. Because they just they they really did write it for us. Oh my gosh, they did. Um, also, me and Dudley were talking about this the other day. That's two books on this list with characters called Ren. And you know what's funny? Yeah. We, they've both been spelt differently. That's so yeah. It's crazy. And then I've also read another um, book with a character called Ren in that's spelt differently to those two names. <laughs> it's clearly a a growing popular name. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Who'd have thought? I've never heard that name it's before, like, and I'm um, seeing it everywhere. It's the main reason I didn't read. I think it was one of Rick Riordan's later things, is Magnus Chase. And I'm like, I can't have another character called Magnus. I know, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Although I... he did put in, he put in the foreword, thank you to Cassandra Clare for letting me use the name Magnus. Oh, did he? he? Asked her. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. But, uh, do you know what? There's nothing I've more than like YA authors like shit like talking to each yeah. other about things like that. Just makes me really happy. I, literally, I was like, I might read it just for that. Because I saw a, uh, a post come up about it, I think, today. And I was like, oh my god, that's really cute. Oh, that's great. Um, So, yeah, I'm really excited for that one. That just seems like the ultimate book for me. I love it. I'm really excited yeah. to read it. Oh my god. Magic. It seems like there's a lot of enemies to... Oh, well, we don't know if it's lovers yet. We could be jumping the gun. Um, I feel like it probably is. I hope so. Like... But it's just... <laughs> Maybe definitely a slow burn, so straight up by street, like oh. right up my street. Can't wait, can't wait. Yeah. So the amazing. next book on our list is the also long anticipated release 
Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo, and that's being released on the 30th of March. It is the next instalment to the Grishaverse world series, however you would like to talk about. I don't know. Yes, that. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. The Grishaverse universe. Um, yeah. It's a sequel to King of Scots, and it's the last in the, it's a duology, so it's the last book in the duology. Um, and it focuses on three characters from the Grishaverse. Um, I won't tell you who. <laughs> Actually, if I tell the people who it is, is that spoilers? I yes. I think so. No? Okay. No, maybe. I don't know. I won't say it, just in case. No. Um, yeah. I'd find quite out, like to have a spoiler-free freaking episode, you know. Oh my gosh, that would be nice. me too. So I won't say who it is, but it's three characters who we have already met in the previous um, series of books that Lee has written. So you will... Yep. Well, I reckon if you wanted to read this duology on its own, you probably could, but you'd, you wouldn't understand some of the references, but you could. But yeah. as always, we always recommend that you read the rest of the source material before digging into anything um, yeah, I, later on in the series. I will tap on this in our book of the month because I have been desperately trying to catch up with Grisha Verse. <laughs> but yes, and, yeah. if you wanted to read these books, we recommend reading it from the start. So that's Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Um, but yeah, we are very excited about it. We both pre-ordered the signed editions, so we are very excited about yes. that as well. And yeah, we can't wait. We are very excited about that one. Completely. Okay, next one and last on our list, because we only have done, like, the first half of the year, because we think we'll do another one Halfway midway through, through yeah. the year of our kind of winter reads. Uh, so this is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sanbury, which is coming out the 15th of June. And here is a little synopsis. After years of waiting for her calling, a trial which every witch must pass in order to come to their powers, the one thing Voya Thomas didn't expect was to fail. When Voya's ancestor gives her an unprecedented second chance to complete her calling, she agrees, and then is horrified when her first task is to kill her first love. (laughs) And this time, failure means every Thomas witch will be stripped of their magic. So it's basically, and from like the rest of the the blurb, she doesn't have a first love, so it's about her trying to fall in love so that she can then kill him. Yeah. But... (laughs) Which... Yeah, it's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna kill. I feel like it's gonna be a heart, a heart jerker. You know, it's gonna. Oh, it's completely! Gonna like we're gonna also fall in love with this person that she falls in love with. Yeah, of course, it's gonna be the ultimate book boyfriend. We're gonna. Have, so let's make a prediction now whether we think it's gonna be a broody boy, um, a cheeky chappy, a cheeky chap, a dangerous daddy, or a. Um, Gentle Jen. Gentle Jen. Now, I'm going to take Dangerous Daddy out of this straight away. Yeah, because that's... I feel like we're not getting Dangerous Daddy vibes from this type of book. What do we think? Gentle Jen, Cheeky Chappy, or a Broody Boy? Broody Boy. I'm going to go Gentle Jen, because I think that he's going to be, like, so pure, and then she's going to have to kill him. So, yeah, that's a good Um, shout. But I think it's going to be a Broody Boy. Mm, because yeah. I feel like it's going to be a friend that oh, well, I hope not, this is what I'm thinking that might happen, it might yep. be a friend that we meet, that she's got who, or a frenemy that she's meet, she met, that she doesn't Ugh. get on with, but she's always got that tension with there's that tension between them um, or it's a friend that she never thought of romantically that, I don't know, yeah, we'll see know, suddenly, we'll see I, it's going to be interesting and I think it's a very fascinating concept yeah am i um, wrong in saying that it might be a poc different. lead as well i think it is i think that this at this point we were like we're only looking for poc leads <laughs> no we weren't but we we kind of have that that filter on once we're looking because it's really important to us and we do really like it so. yes um but i'm really excited for that one that just seems like and it's got you blood magic again obviously oh, yes witchy. what is what is happening and uh, witches there's you know, a massive witch. demand for witches at the minute so you've not read i know you've not read um serpent and dove but no i haven't it's on my list yeah it's you would love it you keep saying about the blood magic i'm like have you not read serpent and dove yet i know um, it's because i i don't know i feel like i've got so many ya series to catch up on um yeah that i just have slept on um and speaking of 
we're going to get to our book of the month. Um, so my book of the month uh, is kind of a series. Um, so I I finished the Grease of Earth trilogy, uh, which is the Shadow and Bone series, and I I was saying I enjoyed it enough. I think it it's a very classic YA. Um, and I sent my predictions for the last book to Danny, and basically everything came true. When um, when Deadly sent them to me, I went, "Wow, you really just guess every single thing that happens in the book." I didn't tell him because I was like, "I'm not going to spoil it." But I thought to myself, "Wow, that was a that was a fantastic guess." And to be honest, I got to the same conclusion before I read the last book as well. Yeah, I feel like it, it was just a natural progression of how they'd set it up. Um, but then I, as I said, just just read Six of Crows. And oh my goodness! When you when you everything on its head. When you're a well seasoned reader of YA f- fantasy like me and Deadly, then you you learn to know what's going to happen in books. You can predict what's going to happen. It's like yeah. when I read Cinder, um, which is um, mm. by Melissa. The Luna Chronicles. Wait, what's her name? Melissa. Melissa Mayer. My yeah, Melissa yeah. Mayer, or Maya, um, which we highly recommend you read. By the way, I within the first three chapters I knew exactly what was going to I knew who was yeah. what was going to happen I, I predicted it I knew but it doesn't make it doesn't make me enjoy it any less I still love it I still I'm still there for the journey but when mm. you get books like Six of Crows where you just cannot oh. guess what's going to happen like it takes no. you for a twist that just when it elevates it to another level it's like it's twist like, wow. and then another twist and yeah. then another twist then another yeah. twist and the characters are so fantastic and I'm I'm glad I read the Grisha Verse trilogy first because I needed that base of the law for them then yeah. to twist it so much. Yeah. Um, and I'm already like five hours into the next book and I finished it yesterday. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my recommendation is the Grisha Verse series by Lee Bardugo. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know there's a lot of people that don't read the Grisha, the first three books. My friend Keely. Who I've mentioned a couple of times on this podcast because yeah, <laughs> she reads a lot of YA as well. She said that she's not going to bother, but she's going to read Six of Crows. But she always does this. She always does this to herself. She always reads books that she <laughs> she skips books. She does it all the time. She did it with Cassandra Clare's books. She skipped them and then was like, "Oh, I didn't ha- when did that happen?" I was like, "Well, it happened in the books that you skipped." So she said she's reading Six of Crows <laughs> before she's even read Grisha Verse, which is fair enough. A lot of people do that, but if you really want to appreciate it, we definitely recommend recommend you read yeah the first completely books. and there's like a few callbacks to the original series in it like they mentioned yeah. characters and things that happened and that's what makes it, it special kind of just gives you yeah it, yeah when you get that little mention of like alina yeah. or whatever you're like oh my gosh yeah um, or sancta yeah there's like a certain yeah sancta alina and that like is. yeah and like when they talk about things that happen and like Kind of, you get to see the ramifications of choices that the characters made in the original trilogy and how it's affected yes. the world, the wider world, um, which I don't think you get to see very much. Is kind of you mostly focus on main characters, whereas this gives you new main characters that exist in the world where yeah. this big thing has happened and what's happened since. Yeah. It's very, it's Lee Bardugo goes very good at world building. Um, oh, so yeah, you're always in the for lore a ride. It's fantastic. Yes. What about you? What's your book of the month? My book of the month is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Um, Nevernight is like, I don't know if it, I know that everyone's going to say to me now, uh, when we post this, everyone's going to be like, Danny, no, Nevernight is not YA fantasy. Even Jay, Jay, Jay's life work is telling people that Nevernight is not YA fantasy. So don't call it, it's not YA fantasy, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying this is the book that I've read. But it gives yeah. me very YA vibes. If you enjoyed Throne of Glass, then you're going to enjoy this book. It's not YA fantasy. I'm putting it out here now. I'm, this is a disclaimer that I'm not saying that the book is <laughs> YA fantasy. But if you were a fan of YA fantasy, you will enjoy this book. But you have to be aware that it is a bit more adult. Just a little bit. Okay. It's a elevated a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more spicy. It's very violent. It's not got very Ooh. pleasant language in. So I does does it fit into that kind of new adult category? The kind of like older YA? Yeah, I think so. Older YA. Well, no, I'm okay. not calling it YA. I'm not calling it YA diddly because I will get no, into okay. calling um, it YA. I, YA. I've put those words in your mouth. That's fine. I'll take the blame. Yes. Because um, if you follow yeah. Jay Christoph on Twitter like I do, then you will see he is constantly tweeting that 
it is not YA. Okay. It isn't, but it's it, it gives Noted. me. If you're a fan of Phone of Glass, definitely <laughs> pick up Never Night. But be aware, it's it's another level. Yeah, it's it's, it's older. Got yeah. bad language in it. It's got sex in it. It's got it's got violence it's very violent um but it is really good it's really funny as well that's another thing it's really funny like it's got some really funny bits in i'm just really enjoying it it's the first one in the trilogy um so i'm looking forward to reading the next books i'm uh yeah yeah, i'm just excited it's really good it's really exciting it it follows sorry i haven't even told you what it's about um just going on about (laughs) saying it's not ya but it follows um a character called mia corvair and she um, loses her family at a very young age, so she makes it her life work to avenge them. So she is training to be an assassin at an assassin school. It's like Hogwarts, but make it assassins. Cool, um, love that. But also not like the magic school, because it's kind of scary and everyone there is a murderer <laughs> so you really just have to take that into account that it isn't actually like that but it's a school where they learn to kill people and it's just really good and there's like some rivalries there's some magic there's things like that Mia doesn't understand she has to learn about herself it's just a really good journey like definitely pick it up it's it's just really exciting okay noted yeah I've heard people talk about it so um, yeah it's uh and um, yeah but that is kind of where we're where we're at for this month. I uh, hope you enjoyed us rambling about our excited, most anticipated releases. Uh, yes. As we didn't have an episode in December because 2020 happened, um, we are going to attempt to have another episode this month. Um, it may be themed. Yes. Uh, you may have guessed the theme from our passionate discussions. Yes. <laughs> so if you are a fan of the Grishaverse series then keep an eye out because I think we're going to do a Grishaverse episode when Deadly has finished all of the books and it won't just be about the books it'll be about the TV show that they're bringing out as well yeah the Netflix adaptation like the casting what we think what we want to happen we're spilling the tea on the Grishaverse series the Grisha so if you are a fan of the Grishaverse definitely join us for that episode it's going to be hype fest of the series so yeah it's gonna be so much fun i'm so excited to properly talk about it with you daddy because i have so much to say we've been holding back talking about <laughs> it just so that you get our genuine first impressions of well not my first impressions because i read it a while ago yeah, but deadly's first impressions and me reacting to deadly's first impressions yeah. it's gonna be a great it's gonna be great so join Amazing. us for that later on in the month but yeah. if you have any anticipated reads for 2021 that we did not put on our list, but you think, oh my gosh, Deadly and Danny, how the hell did you not mention those books? You need to get these on your pre-order list for this year because you're <laughs> going to miss out the words. And please let us know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just let us know. Message us on um, Instagram yeah. or Twitter. We are at your basic podcast on Instagram, at your basic 16 on Twitter. And because there's so many other basics yes um <laughs> yeah so definitely just just dm us follow us send us your recommendations send yeah us your reading we, we love to chat to you guys anything we've had so far has been so much fun to talk to you guys and that's yes. kind of what we're here for is to make friends through ya and do all that yes build a ya healthy ya community where we can all rant about it. <laughs> book loves and hate my friends <laughs> completely yeah, yeah absolutely and uh, yeah until we speak to you next remember to stay safe the world is a crazy place at the moment yes. but uh we've we've always got our books to escape to yes escape through way fantasy that is our advice for the pandemic stay no, inside stay safe and read books <laughs> <laughs> okay bye yes. guys bye see you soon <laughs>